All right, my beautiful Aries. So we are going to give you a full 2022 astrology and tarot reading today. I didn't want to film my face like I normally do because I look whack today and I just wanted that pressure off of, of me thinking about that. So I have my astrology notes on my iPad right here. I've got so many decks lined up here. I'm not even sure which ones I'm going to use yet or how this is even going to go. I'm just going to flow it all. Um, just kind of go with the flow. So Aries, you guys, um, you are going to have some exciting stuff because the North Node is going to be in your second house of finances this next year. So what is going to happen for you guys is a call to move towards more stability and independence within yourself. And that's specifically going to happen from January 18th and it's going to be in your second house for the next year and a half. So the nodes changing houses or changing signs is a really big deal for all of us because we all are going to be experiencing a new eclipse cycle along those nodes, which means that eclipses, which generate a lot of energy and activity in your chart, are going to be happening along the second and eighth house axis. And so what that means is that you guys are going to be faced with certain circumstances and events that bring up the question of your vulnerability versus you being able to take care of yourself, your own independence and being secure within yourself and confident within yourself. So there might be instances with the South Node being in the eighth house where you encounter kind of karmic circumstances to release um, certain aspects that might hinder you from feeling vulnerable or certain aspects that might make you feel like you guys have to rely on other people to get certain needs met. Um, I think that you guys are moving towards a greater sense of, um, yeah, independence. And so it might feel, I'm pulling cards specifically, I guess, related to the nodes right now. Maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I'll be, I don't know, we'll just go with the flow. We'll just see. But I want to see what the nodes changing signs is going to look like for you next year. Knight of Pentacles. Yeah. That's what that feels like. Kind of uh, going on this journey of greater financial independence and greater self-confidence. So it might be a time in which you really are evaluating your possessions, the things that you own, and um, your self-worth as well. And you move from the Knight of Pentacles to the King of Pentacles. That's really beautiful. I kind of feel like these are two different messages right here. This is the overall transition coming into a place of stability where you are actually able with this King of Pentacles to delegate things to other people where you have enough responsibility or enough abundance in your life that you can then be the overseer be the person who is lending the money or telling people how to invest or people are helping you while you're doing something. So there's this level of, there's this leveling up happening within your independence. Um, and that also equates into stronger leadership skills. You guys are also going to have Pisces or sorry, Jupiter transition into Pisces in your 12th house. And that's happening this month. So a lot of your blessings are actually coming from kind of more spiritual aspects of life. Let me pull a card for that. The King of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Page of Swords. Interesting. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. You're not necessarily having a lot of um, career stuff, like, throughout the year. You're not having you know, the eclipses in the 10th house, you're not having any of the outer planets in the 10th house, except Pluto, of course. And that's going to be really activated at the beginning of the year when Pluto is with Venus and Venus is retrograde. You're going to be feeling a reevaluation of your values and of your finances and everything in relation to your career and your career dynamics and career relationships. But this to me is more so like financial or independent of your career. So yeah, I feel like this is you getting really squared away with your own finances and your own um, budgeting and just being really proud of the things that you cultivate by the end of the year for yourself. But then in terms of career, I feel like that's not as much of a hot spot this next year. I kind of feel like you're just going to be putting your head down with this eight of pentacles 
and going with the flow and at least from March onwards from January till March you guys might have that reevaluation period where you are looking into how much you make how you manage your time how you manage emotions or relationships within the workplace what you value and what you want what you truly need in your job and um, maybe leaving behind any old patterns that prevented you from reaching utmost happiness within your career. So that's gonna be from January to March. And then after that, I feel like you guys are hunkering down, putting your head down, working like normal, and cultivating this, uh, this sense of abundance. The Six of Wands and the Seven of Swords are cards that I pulled for the nodes. And I feel like the having the north node in the second house is like the six of wands. It gives you the experience of having some sort of success or having past efforts pay off. Um, when eclipses come through, you can feel like your financial abundance starts to manifest like you've always wanted. The seven of swords is having the south node in the eighth house. The seven of swords is all about the things that we hide from ourselves as well as from others, the shadow aspects of ourselves, the secrets. And that's what the eighth house is. It's actually a lot of the hidden secrets within our within our shadow selves or within our desires that we are scared to manifest or to bring light to. And with the south node there, I really see this more as a purging or letting go of those things. But in order to let go of them, they have to rise up and be visible. And so I feel like you guys are going to be going through a larger kind of not existential crisis, but shadow crisis in a way where like all of the shadows emerge to be witnessed, to be let go of. And so the secrets, the lies, the things that you cover up within yourself, within your relationships, all of those things are purging in this next year and a half. And that's what it, it feels like to have the South Node in Scorpio anyway. And then on top of that being in your eighth house, it's going to remove the barriers that stand between you and a more intimate or vulnerable connection with people. And it's going to help you truly step into your power in the Six of Wands, step into your independence because you feel really strong within yourself um, and you're removing any of those blockages. So this King of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, and Page of Swords are representative of your 12th house journey with Jupiter. Um, that means Saturn is going to be hanging out alone in your 11th house. So this is a time in which um, with Saturn in the 11th house, you could experience just continued focus or effort needing to be put into your relationships. And I really do mean effort, like responsibility, obligations, duties, stepping up to make plans with people, um, following through, you know, living by your word or by your integrity, uh, cultivating relationships with people who are here for the longevity, who have support. Um, built into their nature and you feel like this is an equal beneficial dynamic, I think those are going to be some heavy things to focus on that you've already been focusing on. Um, Saturn's already been in the 11th house already, but now that Jupiter is moving away, it's finally giving um, Saturn this chance to strive on its own, which is a little bit challenging. So it's expansive for Jupiter to be in your 12th house, but it's challenging in terms of your friendship dynamics to have Saturn there alone. So you might find that you do have to put a little bit more effort. Let me pull a card for specifically for Saturn before we go to Jupiter. Yeah, literally what I just say about putting effort, that's what the seven of pentacles is to me, is effort over the long period of time and not expecting to cultivate much out of those relationships until a lot of effort has already been put in. So just like you wouldn't plant a seed and then walk away, come back the next day and try to pull it out of the ground and be frustrated that it's not growing, you wouldn't do that with your relationships either. And followed up by the nine of, nine of cups, this is telling you that true wish fulfillment is coming from your relationship efforts, that as you learn to uh, work with people, as you grow your and cultivate your relationships and put in the necessary effort and energy over the long term, you're going to see that these investments pay off when Saturn does end up leaving the 11th house. And so you guys are going to have this next year um, an opportunity to essentially like build up some endurance in how much you give to other people, how much you think about other people, how much you try to create that sense of community and belonging. You need to put effort into that area of your life. You're meant to endure, you're meant to try hard because those are the things that will pay off and equal this nine of cups, which is true wish fulfillment in those relationships after Saturn has moved out of the 12th house. And Ace of Swords here, I feel like it's telling me that your communication as well 
has the opportunity to undergo um, a beautiful transformation. So having the Seven of Pentacles with the Ace of Swords, I feel like is saying that you guys, by the end of the year, when Saturn does move out of the 11th house, um, let me actually look up when that is. So Saturn won't move out of your ha your 11th house until 2023, um, specifically um, March 7th, 2023. So March 2023, you'll have an opportunity from now until then to get really clear on how you communicate with people as well as what you want out of relationships. With this Ace of Swords, there is a level of clarity here and illumination that is not available to us at all moments. It's a strike of lightning. It's an opportunity. And so I think you guys are going to have, um, you know, the next until March of 2023 to find out what that opportunity is for you guys, the opportunity for growth, the opportunity for clarity, the opportunity for connection, but it's all coming from a place of consistent effort and dedication to the people around you. And what you guys are getting as blessings is all of this clarity that's specifically coming from Jupiter transiting the 12th house. It's interesting because the King of Swords, the Page of Swords, Eight of Pentacles, this all feels very practical. It all feels like it's here to help you guys um, have, like I said, clarity about yourselves, what you want out of life, um, being brutally honest in all facets, but not in a way to hurt people, just completely honest about maybe where you've held yourself back, where you've self-sabotaged, where the past has crept up into your life um, and been a part of your present because those are all 12th house matters. The 12th house is very similar to the 8th house in the sense that we tend to hold our baggage there. The 8th house is where we consciously hold those secrets and the 12th house is where we unconsciously hold those secrets or the, that baggage. And so I think that you guys are going to have this illuminated in a really beautiful, positive way because Jupiter is really thriving in the sign of Pisces. It likes to be in this sign. And so what that means is that as it transits through the 12th house in Pisces, it is connecting you on a deeper spiritual level to your essence, to your needs, to your desires, and it's helping to shed light on the things that you have lied to yourself about. Again, the south node in the eighth house is purging those things that you've lied to yourself about, but the twelfth house is illuminating and helping you spiritually connect with those aspects of yourself that have been hidden from view. So the, how the past has affected the present, how maybe you've unconsciously or subconsciously held on to traumas or fears, how you felt isolated, different, or alone. All of those things are going to come up and as well as your spiritual connection. So this is a time in which you guys can grow immensely spiritually. And because I pulled the eight of pentacles here in the middle, I feel like it's from having some kind of consistent spiritual practice that you guys will develop the dexterity of the mind and the clarity of the mind and the third eye that is going to lead you forward tremendously in your career and in your life. Because the Page of Swords is, is this really adaptable, fun energy. This also kind of makes me feel like you guys might travel a little bit more. Often the 12th house, like the 9th house, is associated with travel as well as Jupiter. So having Jupiter there can indicate you guys living abroad at some point, studying abroad, visiting friends abroad, um, getting some kind of spiritual guru going into an ashram or any kind of spiritual location that's set aside from the world and really benefiting from those experiences like the page of swords swords going into this new land absorbing the information adapting quickly integrating the things that are beneficial to you and then pivoting your life accordingly in a really agile uh, type of way and so I feel like that's one of the benefits that you're going to get is this spiritual connectedness as well as connectedness to foreign lands or foreign people or even gurus can all come in for you to really benefit you and give you new knowledge about yourself as well as about life and the universe and the interconnectedness of all of life that is going to change your perspective with this King of Swords, change your authority, change the way that you make decisions over your life because it's changing you from the inside out. That's what Jupiter passing through the 12th house is doing. And it's giving you that light from the inside out to guide you in this period of darkness or in this time of darkness, especially as we move through some really crazy transits coming up in the astrology in 2022, specifically for the United States. It's going to keep you grounded in yourself and in spirit as well. And so I think it's a time of, of relief or releasing quite a lot, especially a lot of mentally, emotionally, the things that have kept you 
um, again, like lying to yourself or hiding aspects from yourself or hiding from the past. All those things I say like are gonna be really be illuminated for you guys to feel completely differently. And then Jupiter is even going to dip into your sign for a little bit of time, starting in May. Um, I believe it dips into a sign for like um, three months. I have to, again, I have to look that up. I can't remember the the cycle, but it is going to dip into your sign on in May. And what that's going to do is give you guys so many blessings that has come from this, this clarity. That's a time when you're going to have so much personal expansion. I just pulled the four of swords for that. The four of swords is this kind of restful energy where you, um, meditative energy. I feel like that's just going to be kind of part of your personality. And next to the devil card. Oh, that's also something else I wanted to mention. Jupiter in the 12th house is very, the 12th house is where we self-sabotage or where we have these habits and these patterns that unconsciously drive us to make poor decisions for ourselves. And I feel like you guys are, since it's the four swords is next to the devil, when Jupiter moves into the first house, I feel like you guys will have had enough experience with this that you are so aware of what those habits are or those self-sabotaging patterns are, and you guys are healing them with this temperance card and you are releasing them. So that means you, I could see you guys no longer participating in some of these negative habits when Jupiter moves into the first. It's like you've gained all the lessons, you've gained all the understanding from um, connecting with your divine self and you are healing the part, the inner child or the part of you that wants to grab onto those habits for a specific purpose, for the feeling of nurturing, for the feeling of comfort or being accepted um, or accepting yourself. There's something, there's some reason why you self-sabotage or why you have certain bad habits. And I think that the four swords is meaning that you're able to drop in and just go deeply within yourself after Jupiter's transit to 12th house. You can do that in this almost automatic or really easy type of way where it just flows to you. And it becomes part of your nature. That connection with your higher self is just cemented and is easily accessed without having to try. And so I think that's what that's saying. And then that deeper connection leads to this deep sense of healing, this deep sense of patience and understanding with oneself. And that ultimately, that loving energy is able to help you transcend any ways that you've limited yourself with this devil card. And the self-sabotaging is how we limit ourselves. These poor habits, these poor thoughts, this, this feeling of being trapped when we're not trapped. This is a, a total healing of that energy. And so I feel like you guys are gonna be able to achieve so much when Jupiter finally does move into your sign. So again, it's going to dip into your sign for a few months and then it's going to go back into your 12th house. But when it finally transitions into your sign, in 2023, you guys are going to be just this whole new person in a lot of ways and not addicted, not struggling, not clinging to things that don't bring ultimate fulfillment. You're going to have so much more compassion and self-understanding and lightness about you that you won't need to hold on to any of those things and you can manifest things so much quicker and so much easier. Okay, um, the sun will also be in your first house in Aries in March and April time, and then Venus will be there in May. So these are going to be your times to really bring forth some blessings. This is a time when career is more of a focus, relationships and finances are more of a focus, which tends to be the areas of life that people care about the most anyway. So that's, those are your kind of months to get shit done, to be visible, to connect with others, and to manifest a little bit more in career and relationships. And as I mentioned already, you guys are going to be experiencing the Venus retrograde in your 10th house of career with Pluto. So I already touched on this. I'm not going to go into this again, but I just wanted to mention just really briefly that that's your time to reevaluate your career, but that's happening from the beginning of the year till March. Then Venus is finally going to be moving out of Capricorn. It's finally going to be making moves away from Pluto, and we're going to have wrapped up essentially whatever that lesson was about what you need to reimagine or understand in your career that maybe you were um, not aware of or not really focusing on before that point in time. Um, okay, we are going to have some interesting energy come up in terms of aspects. I don't want to get into all the aspects because planets are always making aspects to each other. They're always connecting, but there are a handful that I would like to talk about. Um, so first of all, 
on March 2nd, Venus is going to be conjunct Mars and conjunct Pluto in your 10th house of career. And I pulled the Emperor card for that. So that's your time to become a kind of boss ass bitch, really. The Emperor is all about us setting hard and fast rules for ourselves and following them. I actually had a friend of mine talk about the Emperor last night, whose birthday it was, Ricky, the astrologer. Um, he was talking about how the kings and the knights are are born into this this um, the king specifically are born into privilege they are born into their role but the emperor is made the emperor takes this role and so this becomes this will become you guys essentially with venus and mars and pluto all together in the 10th house of career it's your time to step up and take what you want on march 2nd for you guys to set really strong boundaries um, of, for manifestation and also for yourself to get super clear about what you will and you won't tolerate or what you're looking for in your life just this kind of visibility and clarity happening um, directed towards purpose and what you desire in your career that's really what I see for you guys coming through in March in April 4th we have Venus conjunct Saturn and Mars this is happening in your 11th house of friendship so this is what you're working on here putting effort into friends getting clear about what you want what you're looking for how you communicate those needs well, this kind of flew out. That's interesting. Two of pentacles. So you might find that during that transit in April that you guys have a lot to negotiate when it comes to your relationships. So when Venus is with Saturn and Mars, it's kind of asking yourself how you manage your priorities with everybody um, and with yourself. So, and then after that, we have the Knight of Swords. To me, this is again... Um, this is almost this is almost a warning a little bit with Saturn conjunct Mars of this potential for burnout within relationships um, with this Knight of Swords. This is this really quick moving energy, almost impulsive, making decisions that um, making quick decisions that it thinks will benefit its relationships. But maybe it's a time to also think about this more long term, especially in the sign of Aquarius. Um, uh, specifically on Venus, or sorry, on April 4th, when all these planets are coming together, it's reprioritizing how quickly you are acting for other people. It's like you want, you want to put that effort in, but you also need to make sure that effort is going into yourself with the seven of pentacles. And so it's about balancing or managing all these priorities so that you're not being impulsive or making um, rash decisions or rash decisions and that you're communicating clearly, swiftly, um, and with Mars and Saturn there, the two malefics, the two troubling planets in astrology, not making any um, like quick moves in terms of speaking about something, like not being aggressive in the way that you communicate, being very sure of yourself before you sit down, so that again, you can manage your priority of expressing a need versus cultivating and maintaining connection, which can sometimes go against each other. So these two of pentacles is really asking you to look at both sides of the coin, look at how you're taking care of yourself versus others, and not to act impulsively on that date in April 4th. On April 13th, you guys are going to have Jupiter conjunct Neptune in the 12th house. This is a time when I could see you guys having spiritual breakthroughs. What's interesting is I pulled a page of pentacles, which in this deck is a lot about a representation of working with the earth, working with your hands, um, feeling very tangible, like the things that you're doing are experimental, that you are literally sensing or experiencing physically. And then that's a day, April 13th, with Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces in your 12th house that's completely spiritual that's completely metaphorical or energetic or just felt through the the um the mind or the the senses in terms of like metaphysical senses and so I feel like this is almost advice for this period of time to not become too ungrounded you guys could have these amazing spiritual breakthroughs but it could also lead to this feeling of of just like euphoria and connection with the universe and all these really beautiful things but at the same time i think this card is advice for bringing it back down into the earth taking that into a tangible practical thing in your life um, and and going from there so just kind of keep that in mind on that day where you might feel like super elevated that you just kind of are floating off the ground it's saying to ground yourself in that process as well April 30th, you're going to have Venus conjunct Jupiter and Pisces in the 12th house. So this is such a beautiful time for relationships with the King of Wands. You guys might be feeling really passionate about someone or something new. You might have some new creative visions coming through, especially being Pisces 12th house. 
Um, you might be really stirred emotionally to pursue something or someone that you haven't done before or um, that you that you have already thought about but haven't gone all in. And this is telling you to go all in, follow those passions, follow your gut instinct because you know what the right thing to do in this scenario is. So if a relationship is coming through for you at that time, this is such a blessing. This is a time to reap that reward, reap that abundance with that person. If it's a creative vision, it's time to go all in on that vision and reap the reward of, of that of that experience for yourself. Um, it's all about enjoyment and um, our efforts or our way of being and our nature coming back to us tenfold. So if we've been gracious, receiving that graciousness back from others. If we've been um, giving or if we've been, um, yeah, or using our creative spirits for benefiting others, all those things can be cultivated and reaped at that time. So that's a really beautiful period for you in April, April 30th. July 1st, we're going to have Mars and Aries. So Mars in your sign, super strong, making a square to Pluto. Um, I think also... Okay, yeah. So Mars squaring Pluto, that's just, okay, five of wands. Yeah, that's the kind of energy that you experience from that. So that's going to be, I said, um, July 1st, and it's connected, I feel like at least, to the transit that we had back in March where Venus was with Mars and Pluto in the 10th house. You might have been feeling like, I want to step into my emperor role. I want to step into my confidence and my sense of self and like, lead and take control over certain scenarios but with the five of wands that might go against or rub up against somebody else's will and so what this is saying with the five of wands is that there is a clash of wills occurring where you may re really need to go deep and kind of um, find out how to cooperate or get some type of cohesion in that dynamic um, because you might have felt really powerful back in March but see it all kind of blow up or become tumultuous and chaotic within your work dynamic by um, by July 1st so yeah I definitely feel like you guys are going to have to be really mindful of everyone's desires and how I mean you are an Aries rising so this is like Mars is in your sign, so you're really powered up right now. You might be feeling a little bit more impatient or a little bit more frustrated with other people. With that square to Pluto, it could be certain deadlines that are leaving you really, really um, clashing against people setting those deadlines and thinking it's unrealistic. Or maybe your boss is wanting you to do something or someone else that you work with or some aspect of your career um, dynamic is like not, not in line with what you want or what you were thinking. And it's just kind of creating a little bit of chaos. But with this magician card, I feel like you guys have the power to call in the resources of that you need. The magician has all of his tools. He knows exactly how to navigate scenarios and you are, you're, you are the emperor, right? So this is basically saying that you guys can finagle this situation and create the best possible result out of it. You already have what you need. You don't need to look externally, but you might need to be more cooperative because of course Mars and Aries is not looking for cooperation. It kind of wants to bulldoze a little bit and get what it wants. This magician card is asking you to use all of your resources within yourself um, to put that cooperation first, but also the project first or whatever you're trying to get done. Um, that needs to become the priority at this point in time. Um, you guys are also going to experience um, Mars retrograde. So I'm skipping past one other thing. I'll go back to it. But you guys are experiencing Mars retrograde from October 30th until January 13th and it's retrograding through Gemini. So this is your ruling planet. So that's a very interesting one. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. Ooh, the Hierophant. So having your chart ruler go retrograde is giving you guys the opportunity to go within. And that's always gonna be the case when a planet moves backwards. It helps us internalize that energy and shift through everything that has happened throughout the past year related to Mars, which is about our willpower, us taking action, holding boundaries, defending ourselves, sticking up for ourselves, fighting for what we believe in, expressing our, our passions, our sexuality, our anger, our resentment, all of those all of those intense masculine feelings, all of those things need to be processed, especially in the sign of Gemini, this could, in your third house, this could be a time in which they need to be processed mentally, 
you might need to speak things aloud. This is a really powerful time to see a therapist and kind of observe your mind, observe your speech patterns and how those things um, have played out over the past year. And so the Hierophant card is your chance to really go within. And with this Eight of Wands card, you might be a little bit frustrated that things are not moving as quickly as you would want them to. The Eight of Wands is representing really really fast action, things kind of taking over, going not out of control, but like they are just flowing and they are just at the speed of light. But having Mars retrograde is not your time to have that moving really quickly, right? Mars normally wants to move fast, especially in the third house, it's super busy. It's a time when you probably wanna really push ahead and get a lot done in terms, of, in terms of communication or projects or tasks that you have to do. It's like a lot of busy movement. Um, sometimes this even means like people wanting to travel, but Mars is retrograde, so you might experience more delays. It's your time to go inward. So this Eight of Wands could feel um, a little bit stifling in the sense that that's what you want, but that's not really what you're getting because that's not what you're it's not what you're, we're used to, right? Mars retrograde is giving us the opposite of what we're used to. If you're used to action, it's inaction. If you're used to um, expressing passion, it's internalizing that and understanding like where that passion even comes from or not really feeling maybe as inspired as usual. So you might be like kind of wondering about yourself, like, God, I don't have as much energy as usual, or I just feel like I need some more time alone than usual. And that's okay. That's okay. If you can honor this part of your cycle and explore with this page of wands, your more creative side of yourself as well. Maybe there is a lot more that you guys, um, haven't fully considered exploring or haven't really done yet. I mean, Mars is your chart ruler, which means that it represents a lot about you, your personality, what you want. This page of wands is telling me that when Mars goes retrograde from October to January of next year, you guys are meant to kind of, well, it's the end of October, so I should basically say November. November to mid-January of next year. You guys are meant to, um, you guys are meant to be exploring some maybe new passions or new hobbies that you haven't, like giving yourself the opportunity to explore. Um, being in the third house, it could be related to something to do with communication or social media. It doesn't have to be that, but there might be some like new ideas or new concepts, concepts that come in for you that Mars retrograde brings back up from the past, from your childhood, stuff that you've always said that you wanted to do that you've never given yourself the space to. That's a time when things in our, uh, our normal, um, our normal activities kind of slow down and give us the opportunity to reignite old passions or old things that we haven't explored, like I was saying. The last thing I want to talk about is what's happening on August 1st. So we're going to have um, a kind of intense transit that day, which is a very mixed bag. I'm not even sure how we're going to experience it, really. So I definitely want to pull some cards. But we are going to have Mars conjunct Uranus in your second house, which leads to um, blowing up or instability within our foundation or within our finances, within our resources. It's making a square to Saturn the 11th. So this could be going against your plans. This could be not really what you had in mind. This could um, infringe your ability to enjoy your relationships or um, it could somehow affect your friendships and your community. Um, and that community could be a restrictive force and then it's making a sextile to Venus in the fourth in Cancer which is really beautiful so it's also giving us the blessings of having a strong home having a strong family emotional foundation so all these all these different elements kind of being pulled in so let's just pull a card for that and then we'll wrap up so for that you got the six of Pentacles and the four of cups Interesting. So some of you guys might have an experience there where with the six of pentacles, you are getting some kind of opportunity coming your way that might be a result of previous hard work that you've done. It's this feeling of, of wanting to be giving to other people because you have so much abundance and also people wanting to give back to you because you're so giving. And then we have the four of cups next to it. So it feels like a rejection of this blessing. So you guys might be really um, doubting or uncertain of some opportunity that's coming in for you that you have the potential to act on. It feels like a blessing, but I think that with the square with Saturn the 11th, it's like, does it fit with my plan? Does that actually make sense? So whatever new element is being thrown into the, to the financial situation of your life or the financial foundation or 
like physical resources of your life. Making that square with Saturn and the 11th, I feel like you're like, well, I don't know if that's really what I intended. And I think that you guys might worry a lot about it with the sign of swords. Um, Saturn does tend to cause anxiety, especially with squares, with the with Mars and with Uranus. There's a lot of mental activity, a lot of worry about it, a lot of sleepless nights. And I think that you might be scared of how it could negatively affect you. But to me, I feel like it's saying, well, let's just pull a card and see. With the square with Venus, in, or sorry, the sextile with Venus in the fourth house, I feel like it's saying that there is potential for this resource to be really great. So should they, should Aries take this resource that comes to them or this opportunity, this financial situation that arises in August 1st? Should they act on it? The justice card. I feel like the justice card is telling you that um, you will have a fair out, fair and just outcome. So I think that it's not really giving you as necessarily a yes or a no. I think it might depend upon your personal situation, but I think it's telling you not to worry that the outcome is fair. We've got the justice and the six of pentacles, both cards of equality, both cards of, of fairness, like I was saying. And so you don't need to reject a blessing because you're, my, you're fearful of it somehow backfiring against you um, or somehow not being fair. So I'm just going to say that as it is, you guys are good to go when it comes to acting on this or not acting on it um, because of the fairness here. So whatever you feel is right, I guess it will be dependent on your personal situation. All right, well, I really thought I would use all these cards like on the side. I didn't really use any of them, but I kind of want to pull a card that's going to be representative oh, of how you start off this year, which is the crocodile. And then how you end this year, which I got two of them, the snake and the wolf. I love that you got the wolf ending this year because the wolf is all about community. And with the Saturn moving through your 11th house of friendships, you've put so much effort. And to me, that's going to pay off with this wolf card. It's giving you the opportunity to have that really strong pack that you feel like you belong to. And it's because you have invested in them and they are investing back in you. It will take time to feel this good, but it's already gonna be growing. It's already going to be stabilizing in that area of your life. The snake card is really representing to me you guys purging a lot with this um, Jupiter in the 12th house and especially the south node in your 8th house. It's this renewal cycle that's happening by getting rid of the dead, by recycling the dead and having so much more growth come from that. So just like we make compost out of all the dead things, it, it births a lot of new life to new plants. That's what you guys are going to be experiencing. So you're getting rid of a lot of these shadows, these darker sides of yourself. You're purging a lot of insecurities. You're gaining a lot of clarity about where you've been lying to yourself and you're taking all of that dead um, energy that's kind of been sucking things out of you and you're recycling it back into your life and into yourself in a renewed form and a more hopeful, more optimistic form. And with this snake card, it's going to regenerate you and give you a lot of power of manifestation as well. This crocodile card is interesting. I feel like this is kind of saying that you guys have been dipping your toes into the waters of life that you're going to fully experience now that Jupiter is moving into Pisces in your 12th house. The waters of life are the deeper emotional nature of things, our interconnectedness of everything, um, our, our love, our spiritual practices. I feel like you guys are going much deeper. I think 2020 maybe was about for you guys straddling these two elements of life. How can I be both practical, work oriented, have my feet on the ground, you know, with Pluto moving to the 10th house of career, really asking you to step up in your power in your life in the more public area of your life, but then at the same time having, again, your toes in that water. So um, going into your spiritual realm, connecting to your emotions, connecting to your past, all of those things, you guys have been kind of in and out or straddling the two. And this year is a total rebirth where you're going fully into that energy. You are letting a lot of things go. You are purging and you're stepping into a really solid community. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys for Aries for 2022. I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you have such a blessed day. If you are interested in seeing how this, um, how this reading will play out for you, um, more specifically with, according to your chart, I do have 2022 readings. I have a report that you guys can purchase and I also have a full on reading with me if that's something that you're looking um, forward to. So I hope that you have a beautiful Christmas and New Year's and I can't wait to see you next year. Bye.